And what was the oh, other look, one? Oh, look. We got door stops. Yeah, Pat Kenny brought those for us. That was really nice of him. It, it only, only took over a year. What else do we need him to buy that we can, like, hint? Just I really... whatever annoys him, he'll buy. Because he was annoyed by our... Wait. 10 pound weight over there. Uh, it was, I was using paper before. Yeah. This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned in to episode 89 of The Real Word. Word is up. The word is up. One more episode to 90. That's right. Holla. Had one of our uh, most active and engaging uh, listeners reach out and said he wanted to be on episode 90. Who would that be? Harry Moore. Where does he live? Oh, ooh, Harry's gonna kill me. Just put on the other spot. Oh, I'm is so Harry sorry. in? So he would be. It would be like we would be doing Shoot. like headphone style with him. Is that how we would do it? Why can't I remember where Harry is? Oh lord, oh, I'm no. sorry. I have to know. Now I have or... to know. You really screwed me. Oh, crap. Yeah. So we're gonna do. Maybe it won't be episode ninety. Maybe do episode one hundred. Oh, do to get ourselves stuff. prepared for it. Because you wanted to do like something fun for ninety, but then you're. I have a feeling you're gonna want to get fun again. Oh. On uh, Harry doesn't say where No, I think he's Seattle is, is really Ooh, you know or, what? Uh, Washington. Uh, you know area, what I would but... be willing to do for Harry? I'd be willing to fly to Seattle. Oh, you want to fly there? Yeah. We'll fly Nicole out and then you guys can zoom in with me. That's fun. Uh, I am gonna find out right now where Harry is. But all right, what do we got anyway. for the first? We've got two fantastic uh, rackets and then a marketeer of the week. Uh, I'm gonna find out where Harry's from before this Sorry, show Harry. is over. Uh, but Harry, I think that's a great idea. Anybody that wants to get involved as looking? we approach episode 100, maybe we can no. get some some uh, wire cast, podcasty type of split screen engagement. That would be hmm. pretty cool, right? So will you and I be split too? It might only be room for one of us. Hmm. How? Hmm. How convenient. How convenient. Sounds All right. very convenient. Racket number one, exiting real estate is your business ready for you to leave okay there's a lot of people right now um that maybe have been in the business 20 25 30 or more years mm -hmm. that are planning their exit strategy so bernice ross big uh big ups to bernice always putting out some big, good content on inman.com she wrote an article uh, on this topic we're going to mm -hmm. link that up as we always do mm -hmm. And there's also a built-in quiz. A quiz. And so Nicole and I are going to take this quiz together. Well, but this, are you ready to leave? Are you ready to leave quiz? Psychologically. Psychologically. Oh, I was waiting for you to say the word. No, but there's so many different elements to just like saying, hey, I'm going to get out of the business. I'm going to retire. It's mm -hmm. like, hey, well, you've built this fabulous book of business. Why aren't you selling it? Why aren't you or are you selling it? Or do you have a plan maybe to merge with a team on your way out, have them generate leads and deals out of your book, continue mm -hmm. to market the success that you've had over the years and send you literally mailbox money. Maybe it's, hey, for the first two years, we're gonna give you 25% uh, mm -hmm. of the bananas that come in. Maybe I like bananas. Um, years two to four of this agreement, it's gonna drop down to 15% on your book and then maybe in the fifth year, it drops down to 10%, right? Like. Are you thinking about if you're somebody leaving the industry and have built great contacts, even if you're an agent that is doing like maybe the average like $1 million a year or something like that, mm -hmm. and that might even be higher than the average, but mm -hmm. if you're doing less than what you traditionally did in your business over the years, you've just slowed down, mm -hmm. right? Right. There's still a base of contacts that know you. Right. And if you haven't used social media over the last five, six, seven years, I think that's a huge opportunity for those in that position to say, you know what, I'm going to join the right team to revitalize my brand, mm -hmm. reignite my book. Or at least them... just milk the crap out of your out of your contact. And let them work Base. it. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right. So let's take Bernice's test. You okay. and I, are, neither of us are let, ready to leave the business, right? No. You were over the weekend, I think you said. Mm -hmm. You texted me. I quit real estate. But then you... Got right back on the horse. That, mm, no, didn't that happen. didn't happen this weekend. Hmm, that hmm. was last weekend. Maybe. All right. I think all of us as agents go through some times where we're like, oh my gosh, this is such a frustrating client. Yeah, it definitely wasn't this weekend because I feel this like one. this You weekend had a good was weekend. A, it was a pretty decent weekend. All right, good. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Um, we're going to take the quiz. Okay. What's the first question? If you were to die today, do you have the systems and support people in place that would allow your business to continue without you? Oh, what do you think? Do you think we do right now? I think that as a team we do, but do I individually have systems in place? To support? Hmm. Mm. Like if someone could, could someone sit in Nicole's role? Like the, the business is going to be fine, but the business will the be business fine. The business of Nicole White. The business of Nicole White. Hmm. 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 All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to, how do you, well, you, I know what you, I mean, obviously your answer I'm is yes. yes. I mean, mine's sort of back and forth, but I'll, I'll say yes too. Do you have a written business plan that you follow? Um, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you have a CRM? We both have a CRM. We both do. That mm -hmm. contains all of your clients, most current contact information, including a history of when you last contacted them and how many referrals each person has generated for you so going back that to would what be I, a, that would be another no it's a no for nicole <laughs> uh, i would say a hundred percent i would have to say no to me no. too right even is my crm a hundred percent up to date right now no, no it is not uh but anybody that my point earlier thinking about selling their book Right. What are you selling? Right. Because if you're selling your charisma, unless right. you're going to work every day, your charisma right. is not any good right. to me. Yes. Or as somebody that would buy. Well, my a, a charisma team. is good for you. You're good. As, yeah. Your charisma is good for everybody. Yes. I'm, and I'm good for fun. So. So much fun. So we've got that. But if you were to sell the business, how am I going to extract value out of your book? There needs to be notes. Uh, we need to know: Are these A leads, B mm -hmm. leads, C leads? Uh, have they referred in the past? All mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Yes. Um, do you, question number four, do you have a face-to-face -face system for staying in regular or a system rather for staying in regular face-to-face -face contact with people in your referral database? And have you seen at least 150 of them in person at least three times during the past year? I, yes, I think I figured out what my problem was with reading. I jump over. You don't I'm read like the words. I like jump to the next word. You, and, then, and then you, you like to make up your own sentences when they've already provided you yeah. a fine, a, it was a, a really beautifully written sentence. sentence already. All right, so I'm do you gonna, have a system no. to have face-to-face -face meetings with nope. people? That's nope. automatic. That You don't have to think about whether it's a reminder to you. I don't even have that. So no, I don't have that system, that. except if I run into them at the bar while I'm already out. I mean, that would be a system, right? That's a system. Showing up at the bar consistently. Consistently. If you know your clients are all at the bar, that, that is a system. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. even have to think about that one. You don't think about it. No. Nope. It happens Just automatically. She's one of those that walks in. Oh my gosh, I'm here. Let's like drink all night. And no, then she'll no, have no, like no, no, half it. a drink. And then she's like ordering the waters off to the side. <laughs> and you're like, what the heck? I thought we were drinking all night. Like you've been oh. sitting there drinking waters. What's going That's on? That's fun here? of you. That's nice. Yeah. Look at that. All right. Someone's phone keeps I think jingling. It's mine. It's, I apologize. I mean, your wife. Oh, Hopefully she's okay. Her. Hopefully Again? That wasn't her every single time. No. Yeah. Number five. Have yes. you branded your business with a brand that references real estate, your location, and the types of clients you serve rather than using your name? Really interesting one wow. to me because we decided to name rather, our team not after right. our names. Right, yes. So we are doing this, yes. I thought, I thought maybe she was calling me. I was like, oh, now she's really in, then we in would trouble. Have to, we'd put her on speakerphone on we the show. We would have to, yeah. What is so important? You had to interrupt the recording of the real word. Um, have you branded your business with a brand that references real estate, real your estate? location, and the types of, with a name? That's a lot to put in a have name. Have you branded your business? So not necessarily the name, but are you branding yourself that is, you know, uh, speaking to the real estate consumer that's the way i'm reading okay question. so i feel like the answer on this is yes yeah yeah for us mm -hmm. yeah all right number six does your business have a specific niche and or client type and do you have a website and social media presence based on that niche listen if you don't have that period you're completely you have a niche? irrelevant you have a no, niche like, like do you i have a niche yeah i mean i have a website yeah, and, and so here's the thing, too. You do have a niche, yeah, little brand, mm -hmm. um, but one in company. Think about our yep. company. Okay. Um, I well, mean, for, if, if you're going off of all these questions, our niche one would, company, be, we're pretty... would be our marketing excellence in, in terms of listing homes. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, so yes to so that. So the answer is yes. 
Number seven. And this quiz, by the way, if you take it on Inman, it's really like easy to use. So you just far, it's, click so far it's easy. It's so far. Right along. We have no idea what, the, what what's going to happen at the end, though. We have not done this. Pre we, we're doing it right here on the show. Live. So. Mm -hmm. Do you have a lead generation system that creates a consistent stream of leads that convert into closed business? Hmm. I mean, we definitely have leads coming in, but we have leads for the team coming in as a team. We do. Yes. Yes. You're going to, you're already on no for yourself. I, well, I feel like, like, I feel like my arrow is on no for most of them. Okay. So, so as a team we do, but maybe as individuals, we, well, that's we hard here. Cause this quiz, are we taking it as individuals or are we, or are we taking it as a team? Mm. I've been flipping back and forth. Me too. Between questions. However, it, oh, cause you just want yeses. Is that what? <laughs> yeah. Whatever brings me to yes. It's going to be like, you are not psychologically ready to leave your business. I'm definitely not psychologically no, ready. I'm not ready either. If a CPA showed up tomorrow morning to check your books, would your books be in order? That would be a no. Hmm. For the for one and for company me. as our team, for me. it would be a yes though. For yeah. me, no. For you, no. No. Okay. For but me, that's my goal. That's my 2020 goal though. Board. 2020. Like I don't I want someone to just I actually want someone to just start cutting I, me a paycheck. I like, made the decision to take pay all the money away. A CPS on a monthly basis. Not, you know, there's people Oh, I got to pay my CPA to do my taxes. When you're cheap on your taxes, you get very cheap tax planning and yeah. guidance from a CPA. Right. I've decided every single month I'm going to pay my CPA. It yes. comes right out of my check every month. Yeah. And so my books are in order. I can, yeah. I can say. I need to get my good. books in order. That's what I need. That's, that's a goal. That would be on my, that would be on my business plan that I'm going to be following as well. Nicole, how can I support you in that? Oh, look at you. Yeah. We could talk about that off the air. Oh, hmm. off the air. All right. It's so sweet of you. I'm going to try to get you to make a commitment here on the air. Oh, we can make a commitment. I well, like how making can I commitments. You in that? Did you hear the commitment that I made to Jason? Mm, no, he didn't I have share to it work me. out three times a week. And if I don't, I have to give him $50 per day that I don't work out. It's like every time I don't work out, $50. So are you, what, what counts as a workout for you? Um, well, anything. I just have to take a picture of me working out. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have, I have to get, I have to, so today I have to go buy myself a pair of sneakers. Oh, she's one of those. I have to prepare. She's one of those. <laughs> Before I start, I need to buy the sneakers. Before I can start my new job, I need the new laptop and the yeah. new phone. No, I worked out over the weekend, but like, I really want to like step it up. All right. Yeah. Get the sneakers. Then we'll talk. Okay. Number nine. Can you document your net profit for the past three years? And would the documentation stand up to an IRS audit that'd be a question for my cpa i would i for me i would say yes i would say yes. you didn't have anything else ready but now you're yeah, I'm ready for, for the this. past three years yes i have all right. it all in files in my office yes i yeah, have, I have it. that too okay i'm good i have that. my last three years do you have a specific plan for what you will do after you retire that is a great question nope Right. So you're not ready. I, I would no, say no. Why? Too. So I, I don't feel like that a retirement is really anything that I like plan to do. I personally don't really ever either. We're both super young. So things change right. as, as you get but older. I can't imagine not changes. doing something. No, I'll tell you a story. Although um, you could golf. You would, you would, would you golf? Yeah. I'd golf more. I don't think I golf every day. Yeah. Um, but I'll use my father as an example to this. Ness is sitting here. She's probably like, oh, don't talk about our family, please. But I'm going to use my father well, as, as an example. As long as it's not about her, I think she's okay. Yeah. Well, well I'll find something soon enough to expose Ness on the show. Wow. With. This, but this, this show is taking a lot of different turns. This show is, is, is uh, crazy. Anyway, my father retired a couple of years ago and did not have a great plan for after retirement, just knew he wanted out of the old job, the job he had been doing 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. Having a plan is absolutely critical to not waking up every day and wondering what the next step, what am I going to do today? Right? Like yeah. we talk about that just with agents, like yeah. have a plan, have a calendar, mm -hmm. have time blocks, because then you will wake up every single day with the anxiety of wondering, what do I do? Mm, that's do like I weekends start? sometimes. I hate that. Or you could start a million different places. That alone gives you an anxiety of just not knowing Maybe you're too busy. You don't even know what to pick because you haven't planned out exactly what I'm going to do on a Monday. Mm -hmm. What should I be doing on a Tuesday? Mm -hmm. And retirement for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, because then you just get a whole bunch of free time at your fingertips. You don't know what to do with it. That is stressful. Scary. That's scary shit. It's really scary. All right. Number 11. Mm -hmm. Do you have enough money in investments and or passive income to meet all of your uh, current financial obligations that are not business related. Super important. 
if you're hmm. used to commission checks coming in, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. then you're used to getting large chunks of money uh, at certain times of right. the year. Mm -hmm. And so if you're living like, you know, travel, like, like you're a travel blogger right mm -hmm. now, then, and you don't have these big commission checks coming in, what passive income do you have coming into you to continue to go to fancy restaurants, drink Vuv on a Sunday, whatever your Vuv. thing is. Yeah. I don't do Vuv on Sundays. Do Vuv so on I'm going to, my, and my answer is going to be no. I would be no right now. Do you have sufficient funds or resources to cover any potential health care costs for both you and your family? Yeah, so similar to the other one. Is your money tight and is it right? Uh, no. I have the huge um, life insurance thing. That would require me dying. You'd so, have to die. That would be actually yeah. a great strategy for your wife. I'm going to say no. We don't have the funding. Keep me alive. All right, what happens here? I had seven of 12 correct answers. If you answered yes for seven to nine questions, you have a good foundation, but you still need to make some <laughs> major adjustments before you are fully prepared to obtain the best possible price for your business. Because again, if you don't have all of these things worked out, she's looking for a 12 on 12, right? Yeah, well, mine was four. And it says, if you answered yes for six or fewer questions, you have quite a bit of work to do. <laughs> you have some work to do. All right. Well, we both have work to do. We're not ready to, to sell do. our business. But they're really good questions to at least get your head in the right direction, especially if you're going to be starting in the business. These are actually, it, it, it's almost a, the best time to look at these questions so that you can like do it right from, from the beginning. Build it right for from sure. the beginning. Because then I'll, in, that, in that regard too, like you're talking about that CPA, like at least if you're used to having that expense from the very beginning, it's not something it's that you're trying in. to then find the money to, to, to build it in. Yeah. I yep. mean, I think these are actually great questions. I feel like for new agents to, to just get their mind ready. Totally not a racket, Bernice. Great job. Not a racket. It was getting fun. us to think. And, uh, if you're in this position, we encourage you to go take the, the, uh, quiz over at Inman. All right. Absolutely. Racket number two, OfferPad wants to get buyers into a new house in 24 hours, literally closed mm -hmm. in 24 hours. Yes. And they're talking about cash buyers. So right off the bat, what does that tell me? Offer pads. You're making noise about something that's going to be less than 1% of 1% of the market. I mean, this is going to impact so little people. Mm -hmm. It's almost not even worth discussing like to the fact like right to the point of like who the heck are you targeting okay so just cash buyers okay that's a smaller segment of the market people buying homes now cash buyers that want to have absolutely like no planning like they do like they're so like it's like finding a rental you can't even find a rental in 24 hours you need a credit check and all that stuff i i, I think it's such a small percentage of the market so I'm leaning racket. Nicole, did I take your thunder? No, Jeez. no. Because the way that I was reading this was that these buyers were not cash buyers. That OfferPad was actually going to be giving them the ability because it's their own home. So these people are actually buying an OfferPad mm -hmm. home. And it sounds like they're then going to be providing the money somehow for it to happen quickly or they're going to be doing the financing. That was sort of how I was reading it. Well, in the I first don't know if you get pre -qual qualified before you start looking at the offer pad homes which then allow you to then close that quickly um but they also were talking later on in this article about another platform that they're wanting to open so maybe i was sort this of merging offer the two pad buyer boost is aimed at empowering homeowners to make all cash offers instead i know because but i think it but i think it's offer pad that is giving them the leverage to do so because it's their home Mm. but um, maybe we need some more clarification on this because it says, in, yeah, I, 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 I... Well, tell me where, you, what um, type of buyer would this impact? I don't think it impacts all buyers. If you're talking about a 24-hour process... 
I no, just don't I think, think people are ready I, to make that no, kind I of agree. a decision. I agree. I 100% agree. I think what's interesting though, because again, when you when you read a little bit further down, they do. Oh, so you're talking about the buyer boost. You went down. The buyer boost um, is a little bit different because that actually allows the buyer to close on a new home before their old home has sold. So I do think that that is probably a yep. really great resource because they're using that's the, a good resource. They're using the equity from the home that you currently own in order to buy another one, so you're not having to move twice. We've talked about that in the past. We have. That to me makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Because you're, to your point, the moving is so much easier. But it's interesting though, because I don't know if this is just for offer pad homes though, because mm -hmm. it sounds like most of these um, new platforms are really just in order to allow offer pads homes to be sold. We're going to link the article up. We, we encourage all you guys. Yeah. To... It's all very interesting to see what they're doing, what they're, cause they're claiming you could buy a car in two days. You could buy a boat in two days. So right. why, so not, why buy not a house? house. Right. Well, because it's not a boat and it's not a car, like a car, you can go drive to the guy yeah. who's got one on the corner. I don't know that anybody would actually take, um, would actually choose to buy a home that quickly. But I think what's nice is that there is an option if you decide or need yeah. to, cause you're going to want to do a home inspection, right? I would so imagine. maybe it's like you buy a house in two weeks. It's misleading. It's like, oh, I can buy it in a day, but then what am I doing all of this stuff right. in arrears? Um, yeah. Well, unless it's unless it's you're an investor and you really quickly need to throw your cash somewhere because yeah. you or you just took the test that we just took and you're like, crap, I need some investments so I need that to like load up I can three retire. Today. So I found these great homes that I can close in two days and get a renter in there in four. I mean, yeah, I that's what happened. To, I think quiz. this is a total racket because <laughs> we're just talking about a, just a really small percentage of people that'll Im, that it will impact. Yeah, we both feel the same way about the i buyers. Like, don't get freaked about freaked out about i buyers. Offer that as a solution to the low percentage of people that it'll actually work for. Right, yeah. it's not going to work for everybody, and neither will this. Right. All right. Oh, but we had a little interesting spinoff from this one, though. There was an article Ooh, yeah. that we saw for... Talking about all these uh, instant access homes. This is an open door situation. Yes. In I think that was in Arizona. Chandler. Yeah. Chandler, Arizona. So there was a, a couple, hmm. young couple. This is a really sad story, actually. I don't know why I'm smiling, but it was a very sad story. Yeah. This young couple, 29, 26, went into an open door home and they had their kids in there and then somebody else came to view the showing. home for yeah. a showing and they're like what are you guys living there they had like duffel bags they were like charging their phone the kids were getting uh a bath in yeah. the in the bathroom and uh so the mother said oh you know they were sweaty on the walk over here we had right. to give them a bath like they were posting up because they had they were homeless they had nowhere yeah, to go right um and but, so they, you had some agents like on Facebook. I went all over to Lab Coat. Somebody had posted like, oh, so much for like agents not needing to be at the property. I mean, this obviously, you have an hour in these open door homes. This obviously means that not every single one of these open door homes are recorded. You know, I think that if you're going to give instant access to your home to me, when we have the ability to record any single room right now and watch it from our phones right. and monitor it, that makes a lot of sense to me. I, I guess or assume that that didn't happen here. We'll link that article up too. Yeah. Yes, it's a quick little read. Super sad story. Um, but that's what you're going to get a little bit of. And I think if oh, offer pads, open door, Zillow instant offer, you know, any of these people that are buying these homes, if the market does drop and there's a glut of these vacant homes, if they're right. not going to go and rent them, yeah. you could see more sad shit like oh, this. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you hear horrible stories like this all the time where people just taking advantage of other people or remember during the boom too, I feel like, or maybe it was during the downswing. There were people that were like renting out homes that weren't theirs too. That were like, just, it was the whole thing yeah. is super sad. But I mean, when you get desperate, you do, you do desperate things. Do desperate so things. All yeah. right. So, uh, not a racket, but the marketeer of the week this mm -hmm. week is we're going to highlight Stephanie Anton. She is the strategic uh, director and daily operations for luxury portfolio wow. international. Our Her broker. business card must be Oof. something. It's a long one, Stephanie. Um, but we are, our broker, William Ravis, is affiliated with luxury international yes. portfolio. Right. And a lot of brokerages, maybe yours, is yeah. as well. And so she kind of referenced uh, a 2015 analysis, which I thought was really interesting. We'll mm -hmm. get into why she's the marketeer of the week in just a second. 
But the analysis that she covers, this is a For- Forbes article that we'll link up. 2015 estimated that Americans are exposed to between 4,000 and 10,000 ads daily. And that was four years ago. That was four years ago. It's probably higher now. I'm sure. Making consumers more overwhelmed than ever with media competing for their attention. Absolutely true. You need to have something. We always talk about this. Something that breaks through the noise Mm -hmm. and actually ignites some type of emotion or feeling or reaction to the consumer. So Stephanie... Uh, did a a nice little article on the new rules for marketing luxury real estate, because whether you're in the luxury or not, you are going to be falling into that category of 4,000 to 10,000 ads. Like if you have a cell phone, you're falling into that category. Right. Well, that's probably why our marketeer of the week last week was able to successfully sell that house because he was able to cut through the noise. He was able to cut through the noise that's a great point. Yes. In a big way. Big way. Like that video really news. And now every, I bet you, I bet you Duffy, the sales of Duffy's probably went up too. Oh my God. Yeah. Especially in Newport Harbor. They're probably flooded. Everywhere. He also had so many news outlets pick up that video, that story. Like, Newport Beach agent does this, right? Mm-hmm. Just the free PR. People right. is, I need a PR campaign. Create something great. I'm just and so happy for him that the it. house sold. You know, yeah. poor thing if it didn't sell. All right. So Stephanie's uh, tips for us. Number one, identifying and understanding the affluent consumer. So who is the affluent consumer? Stephanie says the average age of today's luxury real estate buyer is 46 years old with average assets around 8.75 million. Now, I think you want to kind of break that down to your local market because when I think about our average luxury buyer, the ones that we're working with here in Connecticut, and they ain't 46. No. 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 They're a little bit older. Well, so when you, I think when you take the national average and you've got, you know, Silicon Valley 32-year-olds, but you know, that kind of Right. You want to look at your local market yes. there, but understand who your avatar is in your local market. If it's 50 to 55, you know, the overall demo here is 37 to 51. Um, okay. 37 for us. We're not seeing that here locally. So you, you want to kind of adjust that locally, but know who your affluent consumer is. Then number two, craft an engaging plan to target that consumer, Mm -hmm. right? So craft an engaging plan. When creating that plan, uh, it's important to be creative, try new things, you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, But she talks about really just having one plan and sticking to it, not trying everything. So it's going to be, you know, she says affluent boomers, which we deal with the boomers a lot. They still rely heavily on newspapers or magazines, right? Uh oh. Did you so, just did you just say that on ugh, live? Almost just threw up on my microphone. It's been recorded. Here. You're on record. Um, right. I I still believe the best way to reach magazines and newspapers in a way that people are actually going to engage with that content is doing what, what Chris Smith did or uh, Tim Smith did rather in Newport Beach. Oh, yeah. Which is create such a viral video right. that the newspapers and the magazines pick it up. Well, but I mean, you've had a few marketing ideas for ads too, where it's just like one word on a page. Yeah. We still need to execute on that. I still need one newspaper to allow me to send them my money where it's newspapers don't sell homes. Oh. Agents marketing like it's 2020 do. Boom. Phone number. Have That's you, it. That's you, a great newspaper ad. If anybody can execute on it, the local newspapers won't take my money. You've tried? Oh, yeah. I wanted a full page ad. Yeah. Hmm. And they said, no, we won't do that. Interesting. They won't even take your money if you're creative enough. So keep that in mind. All right. And then number three, she says, leveraging the most relevant media channels. Um, of course. And I, and I think no matter what you're going to do, even if you're going to spend heavy on print and newspaper, like she mentions there, In the uh, second tip, I would be putting all of that content and awareness over to social because that's really where people are spending the time. Well, that's where your brand will be built. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So good little quick read. We'll link that one up. uh, So you were going to explain to us why you think she is the marketeer of the week. I think she's the marketeer of the week because she's actually mapped this out. I'm going to go from A, B, C to D to target this affluent buyer. She understands... Too many times, especially as agents, we're 
marketing to everyone mm-hmm. instead of saying, who is my avatar? Who is the person that I'm trying to reach? She really, uh, you know, she took data, took research, mm-hmm. took her time in identifying who, you know, with stats, 46 year old average age with assets around 8.7, um, million and 2.6 million in average real estate holdings. She knows who she's targeting and then she's going to build one solid campaign or plan to uh, target that one person. I'd actually love to see maybe like if like a campaign that maybe like she could, you know, luxury portfolio. No, like that she did. Like Hmm. I would love to see her execute on the plan that she Stephanie Nicole's calling you out. I'm not calling her out. She's calling racket on this whole thing. Well, it's just a lot of numbers and words and, you know, you know, hmm. Nicole doesn't do well with numbers and words. Well, sometimes when there's data, too many, I like data. Stats, no, no, no. I like all that. But words, sometimes there's just too many words. So, and I think to eliminate too many words in your marketing, know who you're marketing to, know what speaks to them. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. So good job, Stephanie. Thanks, Stephanie. You're the marketeer of the week. According to me. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, guys. If you've got a marketeer in your marketplace that's doing something amazing, somebody in your office, somebody on your team, maybe it's something you did yourself. Oh, if you did it yourself, nominate yourself. Send it in. We'd it, love to we share it. We won't that tell anybody everybody. that you nominated no, yourself. No, I will just at the end of the show. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. And Bye, uh, send that into either one of us if you've got a marketeer of the week. Keep it real. Bye.